fucking hot. Hello everyone. So it's been quite a long time since I've done a video. Well, I mean, I think the last time I posted it was maybe January time from a December video. But it's nothing like a sit down video like I did at the start when I first started filming videos. Please excuse, I got my hot water bottle because I'm freezing. So I'm just gonna leave it there. Because it's the weather's so awful at the moment. I don't know if anybody else agrees, but and I just don't want to put the heating on too much because all the electricity and gas or whatever prices have gone up. So hot water bottles it is, even though I mean heating a hot water bottle does use the kettle, so it's using electricity. But never mind. Anyway. In this video today, so I'm going to be talking about the effects from aplastic anemia and the side effects you get from the medication. Everyone's on, is on like different medications. I started on cyclosporin a year ago when I came out of hospital after having ATG and now I think they changed me maybe about th six months ago actually. I think they changed me about six months ago to tacrolimus, so that's what I've been on since. So I'll explain the, the side effects from the both of them. They're kind of similar, but diff well, but different because they're different medications. So that's what this video is going to be about. Uh, to begin with, I'm just going to run through. So, at the, so I'm people who haven't seen the videos and maybe have just clicked on this one because it's like side effects or something. So I had um, aplastic anemia. I was diagnosed a year ago. Um, I had ATG a year ago now actually. So I'm coming up to my like year anniversary or whatever they're going to call it. Um, and I've been doing videos since, trying to raise awareness and also help people who have been diagnosed with the same condition after me, or maybe even before me, who still need a bit of help on, on understanding a few things. So I'm just putting down, it's, you know, I'm not professional, you know, about it, but because I've been through it, I just explained what I've been through and the things I've got from it, you know, or understood from it. Okay, so the effects from aplastic anemia and the medications. So, I got a list. The, the first one I'll explain, weight gain. But so when I show a picture of me um, before I was diagnosed, and I was uh, quite a lot smaller than what I am now, for various different reasons, um, I actually didn't realise I was that, like, that small at the time. <laughs> but then I had aplastic anemia and I was in hospital and Obviously, I had to eat and eat and eat to try and keep my um, well, my my health up really, and I had to get all the nutrients in just to keep healthy. Well, lo and behold, I started on steroids, obviously, because um, I think yeah, you have steroids after ATG. I can't remember actually if I had it before, but after ATG, I had like a course of steroids, which obviously make you if you've been on them before, you'll know they make you eat, they make you put on weight. You have like this moon face that. Yeah, that does go down though. The moon face, you have basically, your face fills out and it goes quite round. Mine did. I don't know if I've got a picture. If I have got a picture, I will show it up on the screen. But yeah, it, it does go down eventually. Eventually. So the weight gain. The, I think the, between the medication, between being home all the time, food being available, I was just eating a lot. So, well, I still am really, because I'm still on the medication. Well, I blame the medication, it might not be that, mind, but it is classed as a side effect. Um, so, for me, I was eight stone, I think, when I went into hospital. Eight stone, and now I am ten stone now, which I find it's, I'm happy with, because I needed to put on weight anyway. It's just trying to tone it up now is what I'm getting at, which it all takes time, and, you know, we're all human at the end of the day. Um, so that's one side effect. Uh, so my main advice of what I've been doing is just basically try and cut down, if you're eating a lot of desserts, which I am, I put my hands up to that, and I can't stop eating my desserts because it's just so nice. So basically cut down on like sugary stuff. Don't cut it out because you still need your, your sugar intakes, you know, um, and exercise. Um, I know it's hard once you've been diagnosed because of the fatigue, which I'll get to, um, to get back into exercise, but once you're back into the swing of things, little enough, maybe little enough done, and it'll help with the weight gain then eventually. And then I do think once you've been on the medication for a certain amount of time, 
it starts reducing slowly because I did notice every week I was getting my bloods checked in the hospital and I was going up and up and up in kilograms. So I started on 56 kilos and now I'm 65 and it was literally over the months it was going up, 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 up until the last three to four months now I've seen a bit of a stop. And it's just been cons consistent on 65 kilograms. So I think it does eventually, your body gets used to it. So that's my advice for that one. So the next one I put down was increased appetite. Well, obviously increased appetite comes with the weight gain then. Um, because I don't know whether it was boredom for me because I wasn't doing anything much. Or basically just because I was hungry and just wanted food all the time. I would just eat I'd pick on things, if there was something in the cupboard, if I was sitting down I'd be like, oh go on, I'll have something to eat, you know. So, increased appetite was one of them. But that goes along with the weight gain. The next ones I can see on my list, right, I've got oily skin, dry skin, and then I'll go on to the hair. So I'll talk about the skin first, okay. So I've listed them both because at the start, okay, when I first started on my medications, oily skin. I had really bad oily skin, especially around here, up, up here, is this the, 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 the T-zone, is it? I'm not professional there, but like all around here, my chin as well. It was it was really bad. I wasn't getting spots or anything, because obviously that was tend to happen, but I didn't get anything like that. So what I would do, I'd try and limit the moisturiser I was putting on my face, because obviously that can make your skin a bit oilier. At the time of my oily skin, I was actually using the Body Shop C CBD. This was like a face mask. So it says soothing oil balm cleansing mask. I know it says it's like oil balm, but you put this on, and I found it really did help my skin. And um, it also helps for the dry skin bit of things as well. I also was using this right. So again, Body Shop, and it was the Aloe Calming Foaming Wash. So I used this a lot when when I was having oily skin problems and. This was good. I don't use it as much anymore because my skin's back to normal now. But it was good if you have are struggling with the oily skin side of things. It was weird because one minute I had oily skin, literally quite quickly it changed then to dry skin. I suffer with like eczema and things anyway, so it wasn't new for me. But what I was using was Dermal Face Wash, which I still use now. Um, you can either get it like a prescription, but you can buy it over the counter, so you might as well just buy it over the counter, doesn't it? Save the NHS. <laughs> Um, it comes in like a green tube. I don't know if I've got any right now. It's like a green tube, like a pump, or you can get smaller versions as well. And then I used a Vino cream then as moisturiser, which I still use now. So I put that on my face. Between the, the two of them, it keeps the dry skin at bay then. And ever since, my skin has been nice and smooth. So, and I think it all depends on what makeup you use as well. Because I did go through a phase of makeup wasn't... Like, some foundations weren't reacting very well. But day to day, I don't tend to wear much foundation just because I want to calm my skin down. So at the moment, I might, if I'm going out, I'll use either the Estee Lauder Double Wear or NARS Sheer Glow. I also use the um, By Terry CC Serum, which I just use as like a like a shine. Because when, it's, when my skin's too dry, there's no shine to it. Which... You kind of had when it was oily, but it was too shiny, if that makes sense. So yeah, they're the ones I use. I just use concealer then for under my eyes, because that's another thing I struggle with, is just black under eyes all the time. So that's the skin. Right, so next step, I'm moving on to hair. So we've gone from skin over to hair. Um, When I... Because obviously, if you've seen any of my other videos, I, yeah, I lost my hair before I was diagnosed with plastic anemia. It was about a year before. Um... So my hair was in the process of growing back when I was first diagnosed. My dog keeps barking or something, so excuse that. So then when I, after I had my treatment then, so my hair was really short. I'll show a picture actually, here. Um, and it was just getting greasier and greasier and greasier. And my hair usually isn't that bad. Like I wash it every two or three days or something, which is the norm for me. And yeah, and that was that. But it was just getting really greasy. But that didn't last very long either. It was like, I think it was, it was going alongside like the oily skin. It was really strange. Um, but another thing I had with hair was hair growth, which worked very well for me with, with the hair on my head um, because I needed to grow that. I wanted to grow it. But then it came along and you had 
hair growth on your face, your arms, your legs. It was just everywhere. And it just kept growing. And I only noticed, I think it was like th two, yeah, maybe two months in. No. A month or two months in to being on cyclosporin. That's the medication with the hair growth, right? Cyclosporin. <laughs> and I was like this in the mirror and I was like, oh my gosh. I had a moustache. Honest to God, it was coming around here and it was like, you could see it. And I was thinking, oh my gosh, what am I supposed to do with this? So, I got one of these. So this is, well it says on site flawless. I got it off Amazon. You can buy them in boots as well. Um, and it's like these little, basically, it looks like this. And you turn it on on the side. And it basically goes around, you go around in a circle on your face like this. And it just gets rid of all the little hairs and your moustache hairs, you know? I think it's like a woman razor or something. I can't remember what they're called now. Um, I'll link a description. Put the link in the description box for this one. Because I'm pretty sure I had mine off Amazon. Just because it was a little bit cheaper than buying from Boots. But I'll link it. Very good. You do have to keep up every few days though. Just while that hair is growing. Because it doesn't. it lasted for me about three months and then it stopped then because it, it just kept coming back it was horrible but that's that, that's fine um it stopped now it's everything's back to normal which is really strange isn't it um hair growth oh another thing i love to mention as well if anybody has any trouble with um hair growing back say if you've had chemo if you had a transplant then i highly recommend these so you see it so this is the Grow Gorgeous Shampoo. I use shampoo and conditioner. Um, this is just the shampoo though for, to show you. It's basically, this is thickening shampoo. And I find this really good for my hair and my scalp as well. Um, and I don't know if it's made my hair grow or not. But since using this, my hair has grown back much longer and much thicker. Like, in a quick, quite quickly. Um, and I also, alongside the shampoo and conditioner, I would use this as well. So this is the Grow Gorgeous Intense Hair Growth Serum for fine thinning hair. So this was really good. So this is what it looks like. I don't know if you can see properly. And it comes with a little pipette that you put in there and then you just, you kind of just squirt it into your, um, into your scalp. Rub it in when your hair is, well I used to do it when my hair was wet. I think you can do it when it's like partially dried. But I prefer to do it when it was wet so then it wouldn't get like that oily look. Which it doesn't to be fair, it doesn't, your hair doesn't go oily at all with it. And I just find it so good for your scalp. So I recommend them. I'll link that website as well because I just can't get enough of it. Right, the next few um, side effects that I found that I've had, mainly since being on tacrolimus rather than cyclosporin. I mean cyclosporin, oh one more thing before I move on from cyclosporin actually. That's the reason I came off it is because my gums had swe swollen up. Um, and they were really bad and they were like, gro I say growing, they were like growing over my teeth on the bottom. Um, it didn't really bother me, they were a bit painful but I I didn't think much of it until I saw one of my consultants and they were like, oh I think we need to take you off our medication because your gums are getting really bad and it's like overgrowing your teeth. And I was like, oh, I was like, that's been nasty. So, <laughs> so they've taken me off that and put me on tacrolimus which, but then brought these side effects. Right, the next side effects I'm going to talk about there's a few. I list them out because they're all kind of the same type of thing. It's all to do with mental health, I suppose. So, I've got fatigue. Fatigue comes with aplastic anemia anyway without the medications, but I don't think the medications help. Um, basically, I get out of breath really quickly, but that comes with the condition anyway. Um, tired. I'm either t so tired that I can't sleep, so tired that I'm sleeping all the time, but can't sleep is one of the side effects I put down and to help with that, I'd say, right, what I've started doing now, most of the time, sometimes I, I slip up, but when I before I go into bed, I don't go on my phone because I don't think that light is very good for your brain. <laughs> so if I'm in bed early, I think, oh, actually, I can't really sleep, so I'll read a bit. Some people say reading before bed isn't very good, but I find it helps me and it helps me sleep. Next up then is anxiety. So... I did, I wouldn't say I've suffered with anxiety much. I do overthink things, but I mean, I think that's quite natural in general life anyway. People do it. But I got to a point, I'd say maybe about two months ago, and I was, I think it was before Christmas, and I was really struggling, and I was like, oh my God, I don't know what's going on. I 
I'm not sure whether I was having like, if it's a thing, I'm not sure if I was having PTSD or something from the diagnosis because when I was diagnosed a year ago, I, I responded so well to it and I didn't, I feel like I didn't really take it in maybe. So after I, oh, I think nine months went by, I was so much better than myself and I think it all hit me then and I was like, oh my gosh, what, what what's happened? Like, what have I just been through? Which was quite a lot for, you know, for someone to go through. It's, so I think that's what happened to me then. And I did mention it to my haematology nurse and she was like, right, do you want me to refer you to speak to somebody? Which I did. And for me, I find this really helped. So if you're um, going through the same thing and having some sort of anxiety, depression about what's happened to you, well, either now, if you're newly diagnosed and you, you're already can't take it in, then it's well worth speaking to somebody. Because I'm speaking to somebody from the cancer services, um, uh, like, is it cancer, ser cancer services therapy um, department? So, because it goes along the same line, doesn't it? So, m mention to your nurse, you can get referred to speak to somebody like that. Or if you're like me, who was six, nine months down the line, um, and now it's hitting you, it's definitely worth speaking to somebody because they can give you exercises and so many things to help you past it, which I found has really helped. And now I'm in, I feel like I'm in a much better place in my head. <laughs> what I also find helps with anxiety, um, I bought one of these. So it's my Aileen Davis Wellness Journal, which I got from, pa right, I don't know if I'm saying this right, I think it's French, Papier, Papier, that's what it looks like. I'll link this website as well because this was really good. So basically it looks like every page more or less looks like this and it has like options of what you can write down and things. So you've got intentions for the day, how much sleep you've had, if you've done any activities, the meals you've ate, eaten, then it says what went well, thoughts and feelings and today I'm thankful for. So I fill this out every night before bed. I did start doing it in the morning but I found I don't really know what I'm grateful for in the morning because I've just woken up. So I moved to do it in the night and I felt it worked much better because by the night I knew what I was grateful for for that day, I knew how I was feeling throughout the day and everything like that. So it's definitely worth getting yourself like a journal type thing if you're feeling like I have been feeling. So the next two I've got um, tired which obviously, obviously comes in with fatigue. Tiredness, yeah, so basically I'm either sleeping all the time or not sleeping enough. It's one or the other. And I've, yeah, and they're, they're, the reasons I've just said are ways to help that. Um, yeah, the next one, right, comes with tacrolimus as a side effect. I've read it, I read up on it, and I was like, oh God. So it's basically like seeing things. It's not quite, I'm not quite having hallucinations as such, but it's like seeing things like, you walk, say you're walking now and you're like, oh, what's that? And you, you think you've seen something and it's all there. It's, re it's really strange. And then as soon as you look, there's nothing there. It's like seeing something at the corner of your eye. Um, which also comes alongside like my concentration. I've got such terrible concentration since since I've, since being diagnosed really, and it doesn't seem to be getting any better. Like I, I don't know, I just can't concentrate on things. My brain just doesn't seem to be working as quickly. Um, at the moment, I haven't figured out how to get over that, so I have no advice for that. But I'm just listing it as one of the side effects that I've been getting. So if you're getting as well, you're not alone. So that was my side effects. I have probably had more, but over the last year, memory. Oh, that's one of them. So lack of concentration, which I just said, and my memory. My memory's gone terrible. And, like, my family will agree to this. I tend to make things up. Like, if, if I'm talking to them, and I'd be like, oh, um, so-and-so said this the other day, when well, they didn't. And I think they said it. Like, I, I genuinely think that what I'm saying is true when it's not. And my mother keeps saying to me, that's not true, that didn't happen. And I'm like, didn't it? Didn't it? Like, I don't know, my brain just isn't functioning properly, which I'm, it, it will start, I think, go back to normal once I'm off these medications. But it's just strange, isn't it? Like, you think, your brain's tricking you into thinking that something's happening when it's not, or someone said something that it's not. But I'm working on it. I'm working on it. But it's just odd, isn't it? It's really strange. Well, that's about it, actually. I haven't got anything else on my list. If, you, if you're watching this and you think, oh, actually, I've had another side effect that she hasn't listed, put it in the comments, because I think it would help if somebody else is watching it. If they read up on the other side effects that somebody else has had, maybe they think, oh, yeah, okay, I've got that, or I've had that. And if you know a way to help that side effect, then put it in as well, so they can have some help on 
how they can sort the side effect out, you know? But one thing I can say, these side effects aren't like forever lasting. They will go eventually. Um, once your body gets used to what you're taking, usually that's when the side effects start to like die down a bit. Um, I'm nearly, so I'm now a year post ATG, which means in my next review, because my bloods have been doing so well, I'm hoping to start getting weaned off the medication. So hopefully the side effects that I've now got will start to get less and less and less until I have none at all. So I'll keep, I'll keep you posted to that. But if you've watched this video and you've made it to the end, I thank you very much. Um, I will be posting more content on aplastic anemia um, as and when it comes up. And yeah, so I hope you've enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.